Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some new insights on uh, how to perform the bibliometric analysis. So uh, there are some misconceptions regarding uh, you and you know undertaking of bibliometric analysis. Recently, I have witnessed uh, in one conference that the people you know simply uh, uh, just. Uh, done something like citation analysis and uh, completed their paper. I could say that uh, this is not the proper way of uh, doing things. The basic purpose of bibliometric analysis is, uh, is different. So I will explain uh, the basic purpose of uh, the bibliometric analysis, what we do it uh, while compiling the data set from Scopus and Web of Science. Okay, so I will I will uh, I'll be moving on with my slides uh, uh, at the beginning, and after that I will you know I will start with a collection of uh, data and the data formatting, and the data can be you know uh, uploaded to the software, and how uh, we can perform it. Okay, so let us start. So, uh, so this is the bibliometric analysis. Why uh, we are doing bibliometric analysis? So, uh, analyze the growth pattern of research in the areas. So, we, we have different uh, areas of research. Some of the areas are new. Some of the areas are already, you know, a lot of research has been done so we have to take a take an area so for a for the research scholar the uh, why a research scholar do bibliometric analysis he or she can understand uh understand the 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 the, the area understand the detailing of the area of research and who are the uh, others who are the uh, who is the, which which journal you know uh, publish more papers uh, with regard to his research area uh, and uh, the pattern of research, recent findings, past research, and there is change, refinement over the past research, what is presently undergoing, and, uh, and what will be the future research agenda. So this kind of uh, thing, and we have to have a theoretical conclusion and we have the, 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 the author of bibliometric analysis and also uh, he, uh, he, you know, he should have a stand on his view based on the, uh, based on the literature compiled and the literature analyzed. So after that, we have to have an understanding of the research gap uh, prevailing in the area. So that will be the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the purpose of the analysis. Uh, so nowadays scholars, you know, scholars and institutions do uh, bibliometric analysis. Now bibliometric analysis is a must for the research scholars. So a research scholar, the beginning research scholar, they have to look on a bibliometric analysis. They have to perform a bibliometric analysis so that they can be able to understand uh, their area of research. Uh, and what is the present status of research? Who are the others? Otherwise, they have to incur with the other sources, and that will be a difficult thing. So, I would suggest the research scholars, the beginning research scholars, they have to undertake a bibliometric analysis so that institution all around the world now performing these bibliometric analysis. There are different softwares available, uh, like R R R Studio, Postfeer, and these these programs aimed at uh, you know, some uh, uh, fi finding of some some network network. This network provides detailing of uh, the different uh, uh, mapping of keywords, the mapping of collaborations of others, mapping of collaboration of countries, mapping of collaboration of universities, etc. <clears throat> so this bibliometric provides a structural analysis of the past literature over a period of time. 
and identifies the shift in the boundaries of disciplines and dictates the most prolific scholars and institutions. That will be one agenda. And it has the potential to introduce several approaches for a systematic, transparent review of the previous literature and give a synthesis of the literature based on a topic to the readers. So, uh, this is the main purpose of uh, this bibliometric analysis. So, uh, you know about citations, the citations analysis can be also performed with this bibliometric analysis. Uh, so, uh, how, uh, the what way we can approach bibliometric analysis, okay? So, uh, again, I will, I will, I will show one of uh, my paper uh, we did. System is slow. So this paper we did, uh, the forward and backward linkages of financial inclusion, fintech, sustainable development goals, a bibliometric analysis I would suggest there should be a theme uh, uh, has to be evolved while performing bibliometric analysis. So here we use the theme that is linkages of financial inclusion, fintech, and sustainable development goals. Mm, uh, that's a, that's the theme. Whether the financial inclusion and the fintech has positively or negatively uh, co correlated with the sustainable development goals or whether the financial inclusion of fintech has a connection with the sustainable development goals right so so for that we have to have some uh, you know introduction uh, introduction part uh, regarding uh, the united nations sustainable development goals agenda and uh, the role of fintech and financial inclusion and uh, which is a specific SDG, which uh, which uh, which uh, focus on this financial inclusion uh, to reach sustainable development goals, and we had some literature review. Literature review is purely purely thematic one. So literature evolution and status of the financial inclusion and exclusion, and we have role of technology in financial inclusion. And we have fintech lead financial inclusion. 
and we have a role of mobile money in financial inclusion. These are the themes which has been evolved. And we have a methodology. The methodology is uh, the, the data set. We have a search option that is financial inclusion, FinTech SDG 8, uh, or financial inclusion, sustainability, or FinTech or sustainability, or, or financial inclusion, sustainable. This is the Boolean search operator we use specifically use for the search option to connect these keywords. So we have, uh, you know, uh, collected data from 2004, 2004 to 2021. Uh, that's the, uh, the period of uh, data collection. Wait, something has happened and this is stuck. Okay, so that's the period of uh, data collection. And, uh, you know, this is the, uh, this is the filtering option. <clears throat> so, uh, So we have search uh, in web of science database and we exclude uh, some other categories uh, excluded uh, uh, the review article excluded some kind of conference proceedings uh, so that we have arrived 779 document so 779 document used as input in vSphere for keyword co-occurrence analysis that is a basic analysis fundamental analysis we did that's keyword co-occurrence analysis uh, and uh, we have uh, a tool that is Web of Science, uh, which has been used. Uh, then, uh, you know, uh, so we have some publications uh, and citation analysis, and we, we have some growth curve of uh, publications, and we have some others production over a period of time, 2012, 2020. Uh, so, Next, uh, we have uh, we have uh, some clustering uh, was done. So the clustering is based on this network visualization. This network visualization is the output, uh, you know, uh, the keyword co-occurrence network. Uh, this output uh, has been captured from Postbear. And we have different clusters that the first cluster we named that financial access that is represented in red, okay? Financial access is a big cluster which was uh, formed, uh, that is financial access. And the second one, financial access, you know, having different keywords. Uh, so the topic uh, which has been done in India, Bangladesh, Africa, Kenya, and other developing countries. And we have a cluster that is cluster two, that is technology represented in green. And we have cluster three, economic structure represented in blue. And we have sustainability represented in yellow. So we have got uh, the major keywords as sustainability, economic structure, that clusters we have named. Uh, and uh, here it is overlay visualization. These overlay visualization shows the date, I means the past, present, and future uh, work. We can see that is the yellow color, which is in 2020. That means the financial inclusion has been changed to FinTech right now. So old old way that is financial inclusion now now financial inclusion uh, has been changed to fintech now we can see that the changed color that is yellow that is fintech and we can find the uh, latest topic machine learning artificial intelligence rec tech financial technology crowdfunding investors protection so bitcoin this is cryptocurrency and uh, you know uh, artificial intelligence machine learning uh, and these, uh, you know, technology platforms, which uh, will be helping FinTech to reach sustainable development goals. That's the basic agenda in which we did this uh, bibliometric analysis that uh, how we can connect this financial inclusion and FinTech to sustainable development goals. Whether this FinTech or financial inclusion will be capable of, this policy framework will be capable of reaching sustainable development goals. And finally, uh, we come across that uh, these things are, you know, helpful for sustainable development goals. This is the thematic mapping, which clearly states that sustainable development goals, which part of the central centrality, 
and these fintech uh, and uh, these fin empowerment service financial inclusion mobile money all these things which which is which acting as a catalyst towards sustainable development goals so finally we did that financial inclusion and sustainability which which is closely linked so the uh, as per the un agenda that is this clearly specifically stated in uh, stated in sdg 8 8.1 which is uh, you know uh, 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 that is very pertinent and these uh, fintech uh, will be uh, capable of uh, you know reaching of sustainable development goals so uh, the un rightly uh, specifically says that uh, sustainable development goals uh, 8.1 uh, the fintech acting as a catalyst to reaching of sustainable development goals that's the basic idea behind this uh, paper and we have given the uh, future opportunities research opportunities and research gap finally we concluded uh, the paper so this is a way in which we should have a basic uh, you know theme uh, basic theme in which we can do the bibliometric analysis so uh, that is essential you know uh, while doing bibliometric analysis Okay, <clears throat> the next, and uh, justify your research methodology. Uh, so if you, if your search keyword, you know, if you search with a keyword and the keyword uh, has the capacity of getting only 20 papers, then there is a no, no meaning in which you do a bibliometric analysis. So your search keyword, uh, you know, uh, is capable of getting uh, more number of papers. So the thousand papers at least, or 500 papers at least, to get some insights uh, in uh, while doing bibliometric analysis. So the sample size is, uh, you know, very pertinent in bibliometric analysis. Uh, so. Uh, so these are the outcomes of uh, 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 there are different items. So you want to know the top gaze uh, will it get after uh, citation analysis to reveal the intellectual structure of the concept. Underlying researchers, we will get it. Systematic analysis of the concept is possible. Content analysis is possible. Future research questions can be developed. So all these things are part of the bibliometric analysis. So, uh, so this kind of, you know, di di uh, diagrams uh, that should be presented in uh, in bibliometric analysis. So later loading, converting, descriptive bibliometric analysis, document, attribute, metric creation, normalization, and data reduction, uh, data clustering, network metrics, site creation, normalization, mapping, etc. So these are the part of, uh, you know, bibliometric analysis. So this is a basic idea, you know, of, of the bibliometric analysis uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, so uh, I will, uh, I will, I will stop right now and uh, I, I will, uh, I will take the next lesson uh, in the next video. Thank you.